The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Good evening and welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board, call us right now. Our telephone number in the Toronto area is 905-725-1907. Toll free anywhere in North America, 1-866-905-7325. Worldwide, one 656 5477 Send us an email right now. Our email address is instudio101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your host of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thank you, Gary, and welcome everyone to this episode, ending our season of Down the Garden Path. So welcome to the show where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. We think it's important and possible to have great gardens that are low maintenance. And this week, we're going to talk a bit about bringing our gardens inside, so that can also be low maintenance, right, Matthew? Mm, Uh, I'm Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design for the past 10 years. It is currently a design-only business here east of the GTA. With me is Matthew Dressing. Hey, Joanne. Hey, everybody. I am Matthew Dressing, uh, local landscape designer, horticultural technician, uh, owner of Natural Affinity Designs, a just starting out a design business here again in the GTA. Uh, and like Joanne said, you know, each week we enjoy doing Down the Garden Path, bringing you interesting and relevant and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden, whether indoors or outdoors. And we learn right along with you from each other, from our research, from the guests that join us here. And we always welcome your questions via social media, emails, or phone calls. Excellent. Yeah, and we definitely want your questions today. Yes. So I'm excited about this topic. It's very, a little bit broad, mm. but it's the holiday season. It's Everybody's thinking about decorating. And um, I think they over look the fact that in addition to our outside urns you can decorate with christmas plants or christmas you know uh, evergreens different things like that um, either strictly for those who don't want to accumulate a lot of decorations or in addition to right so there's lots right. of things that we can bring in and there's lots of ways we can use them to uh, to decorate exactly so yeah. i it, think that's a great topic lots of crossover that maybe not everybody likes to think about yeah yeah, absolutely. And there's always lots of questions around those ho- tricky, sometimes especially like the tricky holiday plants. Yes. So we're looking forward to getting, you know, if you've got questions about poinsettias, questions about Christmas cactus, um, whatever those <laughs> questions are, um, questions about your outdoor urns, anything that you have questions about. Even I know you and um, Gary did a show on everlasting and um, real Christmas fresh trees. Fresh cut trees. So if there's more uh, fresh cut trees, good way. Uh, more questions about Christmas trees, uh, then we'd love to hear those questions as well. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Everything Christmas on the season finale. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this is our season finale. It Matt, is that the was season so professional. Yeah, I know. Did that, was that good? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Everything Christmas on the season finale yeah. of Down the Garden Path. I know. Should we end in a cliffhanger? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come up with a cliffhanger. <laughs> 
Um, so yes, yeah, so no, I don't know that, that we can, <laughs> we're actually capable of doing that. <laughs> but uh, kerfuffle. Suddenly yes, something happens yes, to Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's this. We end up the, the show with a scream and a bang or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, there's there's lots certainly lots to talk about, and I think I think more and more people, as minimalism kind of is the trend, and um, be la- be more with less, like those different websites and those different mindsets of having less clutter and less stuff. Mm. That um, and I know myself. I I kind of did a quick pass of organizing my storage room. Um, just before Halloween and got rid of a bunch of Halloween stuff and literally I had a really big box of old um, evergreen garland um, uh, everlasting oh okay that's evergreen I know know, (laughs) everlasting and I know I and I know I didn't even think about the price I know I had a lot of it and because I had put it used to decorate in a lot of areas in the house and I just thought it's got to go it's time to go and uh You know, so it freed up so much space in the storage room, right? Because <laughs> it's something you use for one week and a half a year, took up so much room. So I think, and a lot of people are looking for the answer. You know, that's kind of tied in. I know it's like a weird segue that I'm going on, but I think it ties in with the greens that we can still make, we still can decorate with things that, you know, yeah, they don't have a li- long lifespan. And yes, you're buying them and, and then they're dying and you're throwing them away. But right. I think you still, it doesn't mean you can't um, still have a lovely, you know, settled, uh, you know, evergreens in the house in different ways and holiday plants. Um, that can really brighten up your space and then you either gift them or you know they just have their time so uh, so yeah I, so I think it's a little bit of thinking outside the box what do you think yeah I agree yeah a lot of people don't really think of combining their you know evergreen boughs and uh, cut branches with uh, plants I mean we like to dress up poinsettias mm-hmm. so a poinsettias I mean you have them for so long but you can stick some cedar in the root ball inside the pot and kind of have that outdoor urn look in your poinsettia or add some sparkling twigs or yes. an ornament or something. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of things that you can get into inside. Yeah. So let's sure. talk some about the plants first because that's something that people think about. I think that's the main thing people think about indoors is like the decorating and then the plants yes. as far as the live yes. stuff for yeah. sure. And when I think of poinsettia, poinsettias, I say, I don't know if you say poinsettias. I don't know. I know there's different s- pronunciations. Um, yes. But one thing I think people don't realize is they come in a um, bunch of different sizes. And I really like the little ones. Yeah. And they get overlooked sometimes. And not all. It depends where you buy them. So, of course, mm-hmm. not the big box stores are just going to buy, you know, they're just going to be all only carry like the 10 inch pot. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think if you go to specialty places, you can get them in a big pot. You can get them in a little pot. And so a big pot, you know, can instead of maybe in Christmas tree, maybe you don't have a room for a Christmas tree or you want to take out something that is uh, isn't um, Christmassy out of that space and you don't know what to put in. So a large um, a large poinsettia would be great. Yeah. Same those little ones grouped together um, on a fireplace mantle yeah. or on a on a on even on a coffee table mm-hmm. can just really add that really pop of color and that seasonal interest, I guess, for the inside. And really not, you know, again, it's not something you have to store, but uh, but they look adorable, don't they? They do, and they add that punch of color. Yeah, and a lot of people don't think of combining them with their house plants already. Like everyone buys it or creates little dish gardens or pots mm-hmm. something up. But at Christmas time, I really find where I work uh, regularly at my garden center, a lot of people don't put them together with things. So, I mean, even just a nice low bowl with three or four poinsettias with a nice silvery ivy a couple branches some twigs it makes a beautiful live centerpiece or oh, you know taking out a tired calancho or another house plant that's maybe overgrown its pot you know taking that out and leaving the other surrounding maybe there's a fern or mm-hmm. again an ivy or an african violet yeah and adding that poinsettia for just a refreshing punch of color yeah, yeah. that is a really good idea yeah. mm-hmm. something like that mm-hmm. yeah. so and i mean this year just kind of going into what, yeah, what I've done is I reclaimed um, a, a really, it's kind of a tabletop sleigh. It's probably about two feet and okay. it's got cast iron, what do you call it, feet or skis okay. on, on the thing. And the sides are gone, but what we're doing is we're going to put a poinsettia on that. Okay. And on the sled. Okay. And then just decorate it around with some, you know, some low fake candles, uh, some other greens around the bottom, Mm -hmm. and really just dress it up and make this big centerpiece on a table that we don't 
often use, like unless there's some right. big party coming over. But oh, okay. Yeah. So using you can use other ornaments and other yeah some of the big some of the bigger ornaments you know the big like big balls you know that right. type of thing can mix in nicely too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Other ho- everyday household items can be really dressed up with just. A little hit of color. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that's great. And something that um, uh, a lot of stores carry, and I know your garden center does as well, is interesting kind of seasonal pots as well. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that you can store fairly easily. And I like things that have um, maybe not just a Christmas theme, like maybe it's a winter theme. Yes. You know, maybe it's snowman and maybe it's, you know, or snow falling or something like that. Yeah. As my yeah. phone keeps going <laughs> out. Uh, um. You know, and so then you invest in something like that that you can literally put out November 1st and keep it out until like April 1st. You know <laughs> what I mean? So you really get prolong the season. Exactly. Um, so you can put, um, so if it's a pot that has like a snow scene or something or a little snowman on it, um, then it's something you can put like a Norfolk pine that mm-hmm. comes to mind, right? Yep. That is a great plant. I know we've talked about them in the show. And, and all these plants that we're going to talk about today. Um, what I call the usual suspects um, <laughs> are definitely also great for not only great for indoor decorating for yourself, but they're great gifts as well. So yes. that's something to keep in mind that, that for the people that you don't know what to do and you don't know what to bring or give them hostess gifts or say, um, people who don't, uh, let's say they do live in a small apartment, then, you know, then that's something that you can give them. Yeah, great little things that can take up little shelf space or smaller vertical spaces on a shelf or that's by right. a windowsill. That's right. Or exactly. Yeah. Um, now, as far as let's just talk about care when we mentioned poinsettias, uh, just to keep them away from a draft, yes, but also away from the heat vent. So they yes. kind of have to be, so they can be tricky, a little tricky to place. Um, but the coffee table sounds like a great idea, right? Cause right. You're, you've done that and not a ton of water. So making sure like if you're leaving that foil hat that we call it on at the b- base yeah. that when you water them, that you empty take out that <laughs> hat and dump it out. You know, so you water it through, but uh, don't leave it soaking in the hat. Yeah. Those are my tips. That's exactly, yeah. That We call that diaper bottom. Oh, is that what you call it? <laughs> okay. it just becomes this big, soggy yes. hat. <laughs> yes, yeah. Because unfortunately, like some of the outside plants, um, the it, the same symptoms for overwater and underwater. They're right? identical. So, yeah. So sometimes we, if the hat's on and you're looking at the plant and you're thinking, man, I, mu- I must, I'm not watering it enough, and yeah. you're realizing, yeah, that it's sitting actually sitting More in water. water. So <laughs> I actually use my trick is ice cubes. Mm-hmm. So I find that they just they slowly water. They don't fill the hat. Um, yeah, that has always been, and I've recommended that to, to all my friends, and they all swear by it as well, that, yeah. you know, when you remember and you think you just take a handful of, because it's just so quick, you're ra- racing around, so it's so easy to overwater them. Yes. Yes, it is. And that's a good way of doing it, too, because poinsettias, they don't like to really dry out for prolonged periods of time. Uh, so just adding a little bit of water is something that I found doing just a little bit of water every day. Like you don't finish the end of your water bottle. There's yes. like that inch or left mm-hmm. in the bottom. Just pour that in yep. once a day kind of thing and keep them evenly moist. They don't like to dry out, but they don't like, like you said, that soggy, wet, yes, the wet kind of wet yes. feet. They like to be moist, but... And if anybody's listening from down there, please write in and correct me. Um, but they are native to South America in more of an alpine region. Okay. So they are kind of along the mountainsides and in the l- lower parts of the valley. So uh, they like that more, a little bit more of that well-drained, looser soil. But okay. again, evenly moist. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what's your next favorite? So aside from those, what's what do you, do you have another well, favorite? B- before we move. OK. Because I do have another favorite. Sure. And it's another pet peeve. <laughs> OK. Um, poinsettias. Yes. The big question. Are they poisonous? The answer is no. OK. They are not poisonous. Um Oh, sorry. We just had Shelly write in, and we both look at the screen, <laughs> at and the we stop. At the same stopped. time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she says, Joanne and Matthew, oh, we're saddened that this is your last radio show of the year. Boo. Uh, you are our Monday evening coffee clutch. Aw, thank, thank you. you very much, Shelly. That makes us so happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to know someone's listening. <laughs> <laughs> and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you, too, Shelly. Absolutely. Shelley, uh, you, you are right. We will not be back until... Uh, January 15th. January 15th. My brother's birthday. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, poinsettias are not poisonous. 
Um, they are part of the euphorbia family. Okay. And a lot of those with the milky white sap are poisonous. Okay. And so I think it's kind of a guilty by association right, thing. Right, right. And the example is uh, I have a couple of years have had a poinsettia tree. And I have a little black rabbit named Brer. Okay. And the poinsettia We're would... just hearing about this now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> post pictures. Yeah. Uh, and the, the leaves would fall off the poinsettia tree. And of course, Brer being a rabbit, what's this green thing? So she'd go and she would eat two or three or four dry leaves and live leaves and nothing happens. Nothing. It doesn't phase her at all. And if you're a rabbit person, there's okay. very immediate ways you can see that <laughs> <laughs> I would think. things change. But yeah, no, so it's it's a total myth. Poinsettias are not poisonous. They're okay. guilty by association. So they're safe for cats. Safe for cats, safe for dogs, safe for rabbits, safe for people, okay. safe for Excellent. Well, Iguanas. thank you. <laughs> thank you for covering that off. Excellent. So that's probably one of the ba- biggest questions I get mm-hmm. at the garden center, especially around indoor house plants at Christmas. Okay. Yeah. So to answer your next question, yes. <laughs> my next favorite uh, is probably, and it's on the list, it's not the next one, but the Christmas cactus. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I love the Christmas adorable. cactus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I've struggled with this one. I do. And why do you struggle? struggle? And I'm just curious because. Well, I just have a little one. So like it's little, like it's a four inch one. Right. And so the whole, I guess it doesn't get much like, I guess I forget about it. And so it's, it's dried out and the leaves go. Yeah. So it's dried out because it's neglected and then I water it and then it kind of sort of comes back to life and then. eh. Yeah. So yeah. And that's what. I'm wondering if it's too small. The too small. The Christmas cactus itself is too small. Yeah. Could be. But the the main thing is everyone it's called a Christmas cactus, but it's not a desert cactus. Mm-hmm. It's actually a forest cactus. Okay. And there are the two types. So the forest cactus, the like the Christmas cactus, the Schlumbergia. Yes. Group, they are kind of like orchids in the way that they find little pockets of moist compost. So they actually, though they're succulent, do require more water than the regular mm-hmm. everyday cactus. Okay. Right. And so I, I knew they weren't a cactus cactus, but right. I still felt like they needed to be dry. Right. Yes. And that's what most people do. And I did that too when I first started. I love them. Okay. Um, the way they grow, those cool tubular flowers, their colors. For sure. And how they bloom, like how the flowers come off the side. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's a cool plant. Cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I just always let mine dry out completely. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a cactus, you know, uh, beginner mistakes kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, oh, it's a forest cactus, and I need to be watering it like once a week, every week and a half. That much? Yeah, oh that's my. how I do it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. My poor sad little guy. <laughs> Six okay. weeks later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And they tend to, I know we call them Christmas cactus, but they also, um, some people say it's more uh, Thanksgiving cactus, like because the, the window isn't like December 25th. Really, right. the window is kind of... November to January, like it is a bigger window, yeah. right? And that's my pet peeve. Um, oh, okay. So the ones that you see out now, yes. they and the Christmas, the Christmas cactus we all think of is that those segments that stick end to end with the very sharp pointy edges. Those are Thanksgiving cactuses. Okay. And they have that long tubular flower. Okay. The Christmas cactus ha- is the same kind of segmented, same habit form kind of all thing, right. but they don't have the points. They're more broad, rounded. Ooh, so they're, I need pictures. they're mm. smooth edged okay. type things. All right. right. And again, usually the Easter cactus, which is the next cactus, will have a little red line. And it has the same flower as a Thanksgiving cactus. But there is a different genus and species that slightly off the Schlumbergia, which is the Easter cactus, which looks like the Christmas cactus. Okay. <laughs> uh, we need <laughs> a whole flowers, cactus show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and flowers differently than the Christmas and Thanksgiving cactus. It has more of a star with very thin, strap-like, wow. clustered. So the things you see as Christmas cactus are generally right now Thanksgiving cactus. Right. Huh. Well, that is very interesting. So anything blooming in the store now or Thanksgiving cactus? Are if they have little points on the edges of the... The things of the flowers or of the leaves of, of the leaves of okay. those segmented cactuses. Those okay. tend to be the Thanksgiving cactuses. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But they are cool in that sometimes even the flowers are striped, right, or two color. You see. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's two, tone. two tones. I've got a gold with a white throat. Really. Yep. And it's okay. Little white anthers and uh, oh, okay. the pollen on the end. Okay. There's a new variety too. I saw just recently. Um, I forget the greenhouse. It's somewhere in the states. But all the new growth 
that comes out is bright, bright gold. And like then yellow? Like yellow gold. Okay. Yeah, like uh, almost, well, I wouldn't say highlighter yellow, but you know, like gold Crayola yellow. Okay. And with mixes of pinks and nice, like rich, dark pinks. All right. And then they, as they age, they go back into their green color. And sunlight? Sunlight uh, doesn't need full sun. Does okay. need a bright, uh, indirect light to a moderate light. And if you give it too much light, you'll see a lot of the time it's either a food issue, a uh, phosphorus, potassium thing, but also uh, in too much light, she'll go red and purple on okay. the tips and on the ends. And that's her saying, mm, a right, little sun. too much sun. Okay. But also take a look at the feeding as well because she's usually missing something too. But I know if I have mine, I have a south-facing window. Okay. But there's a big Manitoba maple that blocks... It gives me sun. very filtered light. But as the season gets later, she goes purple because there's so much light coming in. Oh, okay. And I'm feeding her yeah. regular stuff, regular cactus succulent fertilizer. But she goes purple because of the sun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and again, because of the forest cactus, right? Okay. So she's going to be under the, with the canopies and lower lights. Right. Like yeah. orchids and things. Like All orchids right. and things. And how, can you s- how do you see using them or how do you use yours in decorating? Like, is it just something, you know, just having the plant? Is that enough? Yeah. For me, I like, I, I just love Christmas cactus so much that I like just a, a cool pot. I've got okay. a really cool uh, yellow pot that's all kind of, it's almost like it's bleeding or like paint has run down the sides. Oh, okay. And it matches the same color as the flower for oh, my yeah, yellow cool. Thanksgiving cactus. Another great gift idea. <laughs> yeah, another pot. <laughs> um, yeah, that matches that. So, yeah, you know, grabbing a plant that you see and finding a matching pot. Because oh, okay. you can always, even if you take the plant out, you can always put a cool matching annual or other house plant that you for get sure. later. Right. Yeah. So I keep them as by themselves, but I also like them with ferns or something like a low-growing ivy or okay. a little bark. I like, I'm a little bit more natural. Yeah. That's natural affinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I like to add those natural elements, a little bit of stone and bark or oh, okay. another kind of woodlandy like houseplant to yeah. mix with it. Would they work in those dish gardens, you know, like the covered... Like, or did they want meat? Like a terrarium? Terrarium, yes. They would, but like other succulents you want, it make sure that it's not closed all the time. So okay. succulent terrariums like to be open because of the circulation. Mm-hmm. Right. They like mm-hmm. that humidity, but it's more of a, a lighter humidity, but in more of a dry heat as well. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. So um. <laughs> how's that to the answer? Yeah, that, that, was, that was a good answer. We still have lots of show to go. No, <laughs> we'll, we'll go quickly through the, the last couple ones. Um uh, amaryllis, mm. which is which is one of my favorites as well. Um, my mother in law's favorite. She is uh, she already has two blooming. She planted them ages ago, nice. and yeah. So that and that's something is a gift. You can buy them cut flowers. I don't know if most people know that you can buy them yeah. cut at the flower shop, and they look great in uh, again in a vase on a table. Simple like a simple set centerpiece. Uh, so I think it's something to think about. You can, um, it's a great gift because they come as kits. So you can give someone, um, whether they kind of do it themselves, maybe someone who's now in a condo or an apartment that doesn't have a garden, that's something, a little bit of gardening they could do themselves. Yeah. Or you can pot it up yourself and give it to them as a gift. Um, so, you know, the kits come with a bag of soil and the pot and the bulb. And, uh, yeah, so th- I think they, they take a little while to bloom, depending on your light and depending on how long they've been in the store. Mm-hmm. But on um, the temperature of the store. Remember yes. last year, they all popped because it was so warm. <laughs> um, got a couple of them. Yeah. So, uh, so, but they do make, I think they really brighten up, especially because they're so tall and they're d- just a little bit different. Um, and they really, um, they should be kind of grouped because they do have a tendency to fall over yeah. a little bit. That's their one kind of downsize. But, um, yeah, so I think they're a great little plant that you can t- – the same with you. Like, I take a lot of my house plants away and to pr- put out my Christmas decorating, but not everybody can do that. So Ooh. I think amaryllis are something that you can kind of tuck in with your existing plants just for that pop of color. They've got height. They come in beautiful – all kinds of shades of red and white and pink. Yeah. And uh, But I also think r- think about – cutting them mm-hmm. and having them in a vase because I think they're fairly long, like something you could even put in a bathroom or something, you know, yeah. a room that you don't use very often, but you just want something in there. Nice, beautiful, yeah, of Christmas yeah. color for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And um, and lastly, that we mentioned the Norfolk pine, which is, it looks like a little Christmas tree, um, but it's not really an evergreen, right? It's mm. um, 
uh, and it's not really even a pine tree, but it kind of looks like a nice little Christmas tree. And it's a great one for, again, making that somebody who doesn't maybe doesn't have room for a big tree. You could buy that and put in a little bit of um, uh, little balls and a little bit of decoration on it. Yeah. Um, I have one and I do have one that's in my dining in my living room always. And I do kind of hang little Santas uh, from it at Christmas time, little tiny ones. So. Yeah, that's, that's something to think cute. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think it makes a great gift, but it also adds like that wintry kind of. If you wanted your your your, your yard, <laughs> your <laughs> home to have that kind of Christmas look to it, then it's it's something uh, that I think is worthwhile considering. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure, a great little house plant. Yeah, for sure. yeah, for yeah. sure. So what are the other thing when people are thinking of decorating with greens? They're thinking of. Yeah, mainly outdoors, but again, coming indoors. A lot of people like the live garland coming down the banister rail. Right. Right. Or what they'll do is they'll have the mantle swags. Yes. The mantelpiece swags. And they can make those. Uh, a lot of people will then also wait till uh, earlier in the season. Oh, we have another. Yeah. Another <laughs> message from Ruth. We interrupt ourselves. We'll interrupt ourselves. For a special <laughs> message. Right, Gary? <laughs> from Ruth. Thank you. She, Ruth says, hi, this is a great last show of the year. Very good information. We will, however, miss you folks until the next show. Please hurry back. We promise. We're, we promise to hurry back. So thank you very much uh, for writing in, Ruth. Yes. Uh, we really appreciate it. We love hearing from people. Um, please continue to tell us where you're from and what you like about the show. And we pl- promise to bring you lots more next year. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the the artificial or the everlasting boughs and things that people bring in. Yeah. But you can bring in the real stuff, yeah, too, you can right? definitely bring in the real stuff. A lot of people, if you bring it in early. Define early. Define early. Uh, mid to end of November. Okay. Uh, maybe even beginning of December, depending on depending on how hot or dry your house is. Okay. And that's what tends to do it is... In outside, we've got them in soil, and we've got them, or in Oasis, whichever you build your Christmas outdoor oh, the arrangements. Ones. Yeah, but just when you buy them at the nursery, they're not in anything, right? right. They're just at the ta- on tables. Right, so they don't have anything to draw water from, right. so they've got their water. So there are ways around that, but a lot of people don't realize that they do need to treat them or dunk them and bathe them in order for those evergreens and live fresh stuff to keep that water. Okay. Uh, because our houses are very warm, but they're also very dry yes, yeah. in the winter. And those cut evergreens, they just go right out. And the, the wind, the air, does it for the planted ones, right? If you yes. don't water your cedars enough, yeah. here we are watering again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so when you so how would you treat them? So if you wanted to bring in some evergreen swags to put on your fireplace mantle, how mm. would you treat those? First, I would wait if I'm going to do live evergreens above a fireplace, especially okay. an active one. Okay. Because there's that dry heat draft, For right? Sure. That's going to sure. start to dry them out. So resist it as long as you can in putting it up there. Okay. Or what you can do is a couple of things. You can bathe them. So fill your tub up. And leave them in there for 30 to 40 minutes. And oh, okay. basically, I say 30 to 40 days. Yeah, 30 <laughs> to 40 days. Pull it out of Christmas. Right off. Uh, <laughs> and what happens is it, she'll absorb so much of the moisture out of the tub and kind of reinflate herself. Let her air dry or pat her dry. Okay. Because you don't want to put her out on your beautiful wooden mantelpiece. Yes. Have drip everywhere. Uh, so let her dry out and then put her back. And you have to do that every week, week and a half. Ooh, okay, right. that's too much work. Right, or make sure that you do buy fresh, okay. that it hasn't been sitting around a long time, it has been protected from the wind, and then wilt proof. Okay. So we were talking about that, I think, a couple of shows ago, or a few shows ago. Yes. And uh, what it is, it's organic, it's biodegradable, uh, and you can use it at any time of year. We use it predominantly now, okay. and it'll seal the moisture in. So the leaves have the little holes that they sweat through, if you right. will, for the lack of a better term, uh, or a layman's term. And you basically seal them off with that wilt proof. And that will hold them and protect them somewhat okay. inside as well. But again, some source of water right. is best. The other way to do it as well is if you're going to do a mantelpiece swag or something like that, is do it, have it built fresh through the floral shop. Okay. So wait till mid-December, and they will build it in Oasis. Okay. And that you can water and wilt proof, and it's much more resistant okay. to that. That's something, yeah, if you're entertaining, that type of thing. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Now, could you put, um, could you cut them, do almost treat them a bit like flowers, because you said bathe them, but could you, let's say, do fresh cuts on the green boughs and then put them in, 
water, let's say like a vase, like a large vase or something like that until mid-December. Yeah. The, the trick is the timing because we want to buy them while they're good in yes. stock in the stores. But then Christmas, you know, they start coming in so early, they right? Do. Yeah. Um, so could you treat them almost like flat, like a, like, you know, like cut flowers yeah. and put them in water that way and then take them out of that and use them to decorate like mid December? Yeah. Yeah. You could okay. do that. Um, that'll require a fresh cut once every five to seven days. Okay. And then like your Christmas tree, I would use the stay fresh. So oh, it's okay. basically a floral preservative for Christmas right. trees if you're unfamiliar with it. And you're going to fill that with your water every time you fresh cut it. Okay. And then you are going to have to change your water. Probably every three to four days, yeah. Uh, if if it doesn't go bad, and then again, keeping them cool, right, and in somewhat of a brighter but not dark location. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Never it can be tricky. Yeah. For okay. sure. For sure. Um. Hmm. All right. So, but or again, just and again, like timing is everything too, right? Don't buy your greens the second week of November for the th- third week of December right. or the second week of December. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you're right. I mean, Oasis. So let's let's talk a little bit of Oasis. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the green floral foam. It's a wet foam. There's a, there is a dry foam that floral, you know, artificial things go in. But we're talking about Oasis, which is a wet foam, which flower shops use and florists use, which are great for like centerpieces, that type of thing, or if you wanted to do something floral in, in a mantelpiece. Um, and I know I was telling you before the show when I first got into this industry, that's how we did the outdoor urns. I was trained yeah. on doing them with Oasis. And, you know, we had a system on which, you know, we cut br- we left cut brick one, one this way, we cut brick number two in half and then in quarters. And, you know, so we filled it. And, and I know the lady who taught me said she really liked using Oasis because she could raise it above the outside mm. of the pot so that she could really put the greens in from the sides and really get a lot of drape to them. Right. So that was kind of, you know, th- but then um, over in the last, I guess, five or six years, really, really, it's, I mean, Oasis, as much as it can be kind of useful to a certain degree, um, it's not very environmentally friendly. So it almost seemed like it was like op- contrary to our industry yeah. in that it, it um, is very harmful to our skin. It's very toxic. You shouldn't put it down the drains because it could clog it. Um, harmful to our skin and um, even to throw it away it, it's never gonna it's gonna be around forever it's never gonna bio like it's never gonna break down yeah um, so more and more you know for especially for outdoor things uh, there's been this move away from from using oasis don't you agree oh yeah agreed and, and like you said for the last five or six years we still sell the oasis and yes. everything but it's definitely been everything in soil yeah uh, you can reuse it you can put it in the garden it's environmentally friendly uh, you can actually, if you make a mistake, you can fix said mistake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which was the downside <laughs> to the Oasis. Right. For yeah. sure. For sure. So I definitely want to come back to talking about some, maybe we talk about Green some tips, later. you know, for, for the outdoor urns. But so if you're just doing little amounts, like, so I think I kind of s- can forgive myself a bit of Oasis. If you're just doing small arrangements in the house and you're using, you know, you can use one brick and use it in three different rooms. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's not s- huge amount of environmental impact, whereas three bricks in one outdoor urn, like that's huge, right? Yeah. So it does handy, especially it is handy. Um, your flower shop will know, you know, the best way to use it, and you know it's been um, watered properly and uh, treated, that type of thing. So it's still okay to go and buy those arrangements because they they will last a really long time. Yeah, they y- will. You know, that's the b- benefit of uh, buying those floral arrangements, especially if it's a gift too. Especially if it's a yeah, gift, and a yeah. lot of people like to gift little centerpieces for Christmas dinner and Absolutely. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so that is a good thing. Um, so yeah, so, um, so uh, but I do like putting, um, and I know I might have a girlfriend who didn't do really a big uh, staircase like along the railing of the staircase. Um, she didn't buy the whole r- um, what's it called when you get the rope, like the cedar rope, right? But she liked she preferred the pine boughs, so she would wait till close to Christmas, and then she'd literally tie individual boughs with ribbon onto her staircase oh. uh, and it really made a ni- you know the way the pine kind of drapes nicely yeah. and the bows were a fun you know fashionable but functional at the same time uh, that type of thing and so they that quite that lasted you know that did pretty good um, so it was a different way so I think there's some you can really get creative 
with your evergreens. I think you can put them, keep them in vases, mm-hmm. you know, put some dried arrangements or some amaryllis with some green and then they're in water, yeah. you know, or whether um, I also love red gerberas. So people don't mm. think about they're really not a Christmas flower, but they really do last a long time. They do. And I love them. I love the big, fl- big head on them. So you can add those into a vase, add a little bit of pine and a little bit of cedar in that vase and have that on a mantle plate, mantle or to coffee table or end table. And it really looks like a nice, um, nice Christmassy gift, I think, or, you know, feature in the house. So again, if you're decorating, you can decorate with, there's lots of plants, um, even nes- not necessarily, you know, Christmas ones, but ones, uh, even roses. You mean yeah. the flower shops will do one with red roses and evergreens and cedars draping um, and really have some nice, um, some nice uh, arrangements. And you can really mix it up by having the cedar uh, thrown into any other arrangement. And it just adds, uh, you know, you are decorating with Christmas um, and with the plant live plant material as opposed to artificial yeah. stuff that you have to store. So, yeah. And you I can see by your screen, I you were looking at us. I was reading ahead. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Tom has written in. Thank you, Tom. Yes, you are hearing correctly. Um, this is our last show for a few weeks. Our, we're kind of ending our season, as we're calling it. Um, and we will start up again in um, January, January 15th. 15th. And you are a landscaper. Oh, I really appreciate that. We love hearing um, from landscapers. So uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania. And uh, and that's great that you look forward to uh, passing our free advice on to your <laughs> clients. Excellent. Uh, you should check out my newsletter. A lot of stuff that we talk about on the show ends up going into the newsletter that I email out, uh, Tom. So uh, if you go to down the gar- or down to earth.ca, my website, who I, um, you can see right sign up for my newsletter. And I just send it once a month. And uh, it gives everybody lots of good tips on what to do and what not to do in your garden. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff that we talk about here on the show. So there's still so much to talk about. (laughs) There's still tons to talk about. (laughs) Yes, yes. Now, have you done your... Well, let's go to... Let's segue to the outdoor urns. Have you done yours yet? Do you do them? Uh, I don't. Being on a balcony, as everyone knows, I usually have the shears closed. Okay. Because I face a roadway. Okay. And so we... Don't see them. We don't want to be on. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Look in the fishbowl. Yes. Uh, So I go to Nana's. And I do them because okay. I look after her garden. And she has uh, what are they now? Seventy-two inch, a seventy-two inch window box. Wow! That I do, and then a thirty-six inch on the other side of the door. Okay. Just the proportion, the way the door is. To so I do those. And no, I hadn't. I'd gone to do it last week. Yes. And it was so windy, yeah. I couldn't keep them upright, and they were just falling apart. So I'm waiting to cool it down. But no, so no, I haven't quite yet. Yes, me either. I did buy some stuff on Saturday. I haven't quite been in the mood. Um, and it has, the weather has, every time I think about it, the weather isn't agreeing. Although tomorrow is kind of the day. Apparently Jeez. we're going to have a bit of a warm day tomorrow. And uh, so I am going to try and do that. I have a couple that I see out my uh, my kitchen window that I have containers on the like half those half baskets oh, on yeah. the on the brick wall outside. So I see those. So I like to kind of put something in those, and uh, and then my front door at the front door I'm going to put in put a couple up. So I haven't nice. really decided my theme or anything like that. I've been trying to be inspired on Instagram. Um, been downtown a few times, and they're really doing stuff downtown very differently. A lot Ooh. of black, a lot of dyed black uh, plant material. Yeah, it's kind of Interesting, weird. I haven't yeah, been down yet. Yeah, so they really are doing some funky stuff. I'm not fond of that because I know the wet, wet will cause it all to bleed. Yes. So I'm kind of looking at that with skepticism. Yeah. But as we mentioned, we definitely recommend using soil and making moving away from oasis. Mm-hmm. Don't you agree? 100%. It's yeah. so much easier. It's inexpensive, environmentally friendly. You can build it up. You can do yeah. so many great things with it. Yeah. And like we mentioned last week or a couple of weeks ago, if you haven't taken out your annuals, mm. your conta- your dumped out those yet, don't dump them out. I did dump them out of one. Uh, <laughs> um, you just cut the annuals, cut your begonias yeah. and geraniums, cut them off. And then that soil that's in the pot when it warms up. And I've been known and other people were telling me too their stories about, you know, having to bring them inside for two days to thaw. I've done the boiling water. I to, have done that. Yeah, the, to, to <laughs> make them thaw. So if you've left it too late, there are ways around it. Um, but the nice thing about those old containers that have all those soil and roots um, it is a pretty good solid base for you to stick some evergreen br- branches in. Yeah, uh, that exactly. type of thing. So, uh, so yeah. So, have you noticed at the garden center? Have you noticed any new trends, a new material? Um, 
Lots of funky different pods coming and going. Pods. Yeah. Like P-O-D. P-O-D. Yes. Okay. Uh, like unnamed. I don't even know what plants they're from. They just mysterious seed heads okay uh that show up um we had this year nigella stems so love in a mist it's an annual in our area okay and it was dried beautiful little purpley gold shiny seed heads uh they were neat uh and then a lot of people are moving to and i'm kind of doing this for my christmas is i don't know the woodworking term but you know like the cut out trees okay they're almost yeah a lot of that like colored mittens and reindeer and trees and more of an stuff. ornament kind of like Very a wooden ornament on a stick kind of yeah thing. exactly yes. kind yep. of more in the different ornaments yeah i think we definitely have gone like the trend is more natural i think it started with those birch branches yes and going to more of natural like this you know i remember the day when there was lots of silver remember we used to color block all the silver oh, and the yeah. gold and the green and the red and all the sparkly stuff and and there's been a move i think away from that i barely noticed that at the garden center on and the weekend. you've hit it yeah a big trend a lot of people they like that christmas bling like just a hit of it yes but they're very much like you were saying earlier thinking like with the containers thinking winter yes instead of just christmas yes yeah so a lot of people berries birch again uh one of my favorite cut branches uh linden if you ever cut linden, that shiny, smooth bronze with all the buds waiting to pop for next really? year. I'm like picturing my head. I can't picture. Oh, it's okay. A, just all the new growth. It's just absolutely stunning. Huh. Uh, yeah, curly linden. willows. I know those curly have always willows, done well. Dogwoods. Yeah. 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 And then outside of that, the greens. Not really too much in the greens. Magnolia is still yes. super, super strong with the birch. Yep. Uh, Oregonia. Yes. A form of variegated boxwood. Yep. Yep. Those are pretty strong, but. Yeah, the big uh, the big trend, yeah, is either whatever the color of the year is, and again, kind of going more to the natural, natural side. side. Yeah, and yeah. I think it is because people are seeing. Well, one is because once you buy that stuff, it it doesn't you have it you right have it like you have have it forever. So you've got the the you know the gold and the sparkly stuff. You're gonna keep have it for a few years, so they're mm. not. I don't think they're buying it every year. Um, and then the other thing is, I think the trend is people realizing that they're putting those up mid November, and they need them to last until at least March. Right. And um, that it's better to go with more of a natural, uh, natural thing. I think the exception can sometimes be the berries because I know our natural berries, as amazing as they look when you buy them at the nursery now, mm-hmm. they do well. One, the birds could eat them, <laughs> which is <laughs> what they're there for. And two, they do they can like kind of freeze and fall off, mm. or if they're the wind or if they're anywhere near the entrance where they get knocked if people are walking by so i've had that bad experience yeah and i did invest in some really like they were pricier but they really looked and they were meant for the outside right yes because there's both yes there's both and they look good they look good and they they are kind of they are everlasting you can yes you can go to the dollar store ones but unfortunately those ones are filled those little pods are filled with styrofoam yeah. and you're going to find you know after the after jan- by january 1st if that they're going to all start cracking oh. and you're just going to see white white styrofoam so yeah. if it's something you really like the berry look um and i know you're going to look at the price and have a bit of sticker shock but they're going to last you you know four or five years and they're going to look real so that's something that i did invest in a few years ago yeah um because i wanted that pop of color in more of a natural thing versus a bobble right you know, i wanted the berries so yeah. i've got a crab apple in my trunk that's going to nana's oh, okay that i bought like nine years ago wow and they're perfect they're a little uh, slightly faded but yes. again i invested and they're there okay so i don't have to worry about that okay yeah, yeah so definitely it's worth the money What's your thought on, since we're talking about natural items, um, some people go and forage. Um, and, and I know I'm guilty. I used to go and get <laughs> pet sumac. And so I, but I know that it's kind of a controversial thing now with environmentalists and, and stuff. So I just it wonder what your, what your take on that was, a little segue to. Because, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, some people, there's, you know, dogwood's growing wild. Why would I buy dogwood? It's growing wild. And why would I buy sumac? It's growing wild over there. And, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm kind of half and half. I think it's for me more of an awareness thing for so like we know that dogwood grows so quickly once it's established that yearly you can cut it back to six to eight inches and she'll pretty much reward you with new new growth if she's happy and she's in the right spot um same with sumac right i mean she's such an almost invasive yes weed that can you really cut of much of that down Mm -hmm. Mm, no 
But I worry when people get into like the cedar and the spruce and the, mm. right? I mean, you get into the winter animals that are using that for protection. Mm. Uh, evergreens can be very stubborn on growing on old wood. So if you're cutting back too far and you're damaging, there's issues of invading other people's property and yes. stealing from their gardens. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah. More, I'm thinking more people out in the... In the bushes in kind the of bushes thing. And the, yeah. stuff. Or their own, like some people might cut. So that's something, if you're thinking you're cutting of your own cedar or your own blue spruce Even or there, something yeah. like that, realize that when you cut those, they don't regrow. They don't right. break like deciduous wood and yes. fatten up. Yes, No, exactly. And they, they do, yes, but not as vigorously or as readily as a dogwood might or a right. spirea does or whatever. Right. Yeah. And I know I, for a while, I planted, um, I had to take them out this year, but I did plant um, dogwood myself just so I could use them, yeah. you know, this time of year. And, well, they stayed in the garden. They added some nice interest at this time of year. But then also if I needed, when they got too big, then I could cut the branches or thin the branches and use them. Right. So definitely if, if you want to think when you're designing your garden, think of plants that do have some winter interest that you can use. Yeah. Um, but I do think that, you know, if one person goes and cuts, you know, a sumac down, it's not going to be a big deal. But if your yeah. whole neighborhood is going to yes. this field of sumac, instead of buying it at the nursery or the flower shop or the store, yeah. you know, then I think it's, that's kind of the issue, you that's, know? Yeah. And, um, and I know someone, uh, my neighbor went on a, one of those na educated nature walks in the summer and I didn't get to go with her. And she was saying, and the tour guide was just talking about the importance of, you know, that people were doing that type of thing, that foraging, but that, um, you know, that the, you know, the sumac maybe is win is the, as a windbreak for the plant behind it. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a reason why things grow the way they do in nature. And then if we're foraging and taking from that, um, in the middle of winter, right. you know, yeah, I mean, the plant's going to survive and do well, but we don't know what else it's affecting. Um, and you know, the wind that it's changing, you know, like kind of a bigger picture. So, yes. So, yeah. So I, I know there's some people out there are going to be like, well, you know, the field behind my house has tons of sumac or tons of dogwood, but that's something to just think about, think about, um, that, you know, if one person's doing it, it means one thing, but you know, if everybody starts but doing if it, everybody's doing yes. it, that's like kind of on the fence about yeah. it. A few people doing it is, are, are okay, mm -hmm. but Everybody doing it, especially in one spot. Right. That's dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're damaging an ecosystem. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. For sure. Um, so, yeah. So, more about anything else you can think of with the group. Oh, uh, we have a definite tip with the green, the outdoor urns. Can you think about it? No. No. <laughs> that <laughs> you like, still need to water them. Uh, oh, we, yeah. Yeah. So, so we've, we've done them and we've cut them. We put them in, <laughs> in, in soil. And people don't realize that they, especially if they want them to last till March, yes. you need to water them. And if we get a warm up in February or at the end of January, you need to water it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's something to think about that those stems, I've done them where, yep, by February 1st, they're all brown. Yep, exactly. You know? mm -hmm. um, and you can use, even more outside, you can use wilt proof as well. Oh, most certainly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, wilt proof for sure. Uh, we Does recommend your garden it center spray all your urns that they do with wilt proof? Usually if they're a custom order, yes. Okay. Um, the ones that we buy in, no. Okay. Um, but usually people add a bunch of different stuff to it and add yes. more branches. So we, we'll sell it to them then. Okay. Right. And the other thing too, people don't realize too is you can use the stay fresh when you're making the fresh cuts. Mix it with your water when you water it in. You'll start oh. to draw that up through the water as well. Into the soil? Like you can use the stew yeah, brush and put it in like a, a watering can or whatever. Right. And Di water them that way? Yeah, dilute it. Yes. Yeah, because it is concentrate. And yep. then water it in like you're watering like a fertilizer. And oh. that'll help prevent them from sealing and encourage them to drink a little bit more. That's a great yeah. idea. So you encourage them to drink and then you're sealing them with the wilt proof. Right. 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 Yeah. Now you can overuse wilt proof. You, you can, yeah. And I, it, I've heard of like the urns going, like the greens that going all black because they've been too much. They get a little kind of funky or, yeah, or okay. they, exactly, they can't breathe so much that they do start to go funky. Yes. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like the, you know, with dried flowers, we used to like hairspray the heck out of them to yeah. keep them dried. <laughs> That's not what Wilproof does. So it's just meant for a light mist, just to hold a you bit of the moisture in. Right? Just glistening. You don't need it dripping and soaking and whatever. Yes. But yeah, you'd have to apply uh, it's still a lot of wilt proof too. So just still be careful. Okay. Most certainly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think that's my biggest tip is making sure you water it. Um, Weekly. Sure, yeah. Until she freezes. And until it freezes. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, design wise, I think everybody's a little different. I think the trend has been a bit more natural, going to a bit more natural. Yeah. 
um, and uh, new soil. So I guess if you don't have a pot, like we said, where the, you've cut out the annuals, so starting with new soil, are there any tips? Because that would be a little bit more loose, right? Yeah. I just like to compact it in, in layers. Okay. So even just a basic triple mix. You can do it in a potting soil, but it's much lighter. Right. So you do get movement. So go to like a triple mix or a garden soil, and then just compact it in layers. So like just three or four inches, give it a good firm, three okay. or four inches, and she'll go in. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, Another tip, I guess, is just we were talking about the skirt earlier, right? And with the oasis and raising it yes, out. Yes, yes. Um, I find, just in my experience, don't be afraid to leave some longer boughs. So you get a nice piece of BC cedar. So BC okay. is very dark green, very loose, wispy compared to Ontario. Lighter green, more stiff and erect. Uh, so BC cedar is used for the skirt. Right, which more we call draping. The edging, the draping, yep. right. Leave a longer piece. Leave a piece that's a foot long. Okay. Clear some of the ends of the, the clusters of needles, the leaves okay. on the bottom. But then stick that kind of sideways into the middle. So she's almost going in at like a 60 or a 70 degree angle. Okay. And just the weight of her being almost on her side will dip over and create oh, a thing okay. for other greens to rest on. Right. But also cover that gap if you need to get okay. that bigger skirt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Start uh, with your branches. Mm -hmm. Oh it. yes, start with the like the like the dogwood right. and stuff. Start you with start your dogwood with those? or your birch really? or whatever. Right, because what happens is a lot of people will make this really tiny little green urn, uh -huh. which looks beautiful, but then they put in the dogwood that they don't cut, and the it's proportions are wrong. Right, it's like three feet tall, and you've got this one foot thing, so it just looks totally off scale and okay. is a little visually off putting. Yeah, definitely think of scale. Yeah, yeah. Start with your branches. And decide how tall you want it to be, because that's how tall it's going to ultimately be, right? Right. You have five feet birch, you have a five foot urn. But then go about two thirds of that height. So if you've got a two and a half foot dogwood, okay, you know, you're going to go up to that foot and a quarter to two foot kind of range. Yeah. And think about the wind. And I think mm -hmm. um, lots of times people that have porches or have coverings have a bit of, um, you know, they can get away with a bit more than people who don't, you know, people who have quite exposed, um, they they have you have to kind of really consider the wind, yeah. uh, also the dyed, you know, I think the dyed material is kind of trending out, but if yes. you are exposed, even the ribbon, you know, if the mm -hmm. ribbon, you know, you have to really look at what kind of ribbon you're buying, um, because then it's really going to, you know, if it's getting the snow and the ice and the rain on it, um, it may not last as long. So yeah. I think you have to also think about your conditions and my, which might, might mean you can't be matchy matchy because your one that's covered can't match the one that's exposed. Yeah. You know, so that type of thing. So I think think about Position. um, positioning and weather exposure. Um, especially at the design stage when you're walking around picking them, you know, because I think right. you get home and then you're like, uh oh, <laughs> you know, they're both the same. I bought all the same material and, you know, one is going to do better than the other, uh, that type of thing. So that's something to think about. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And I know I'm just showing Matt some pictures of some really different ones. This designer, I, I haven't, I'm not sure if I like them or not. I'm not going to mention who it is, but they're just a little bit different. Simple or in a way, mm -hmm. but um, kind of done in layers, that type of thing. So there's lots of pictures on Instagram. Yes. Um, so I think that's, I haven't figured out what the best hashtag was though to find them. Um, no, yeah. So, uh, so I'll uh, start one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I might put that on, if I can find <laughs> it, I will, uh, I will put that on Facebook and share that with everybody or on my fa my uh, Instagram page. Uh, just as we wrap up, there was a, yeah, there's that an, an idea in one of these pictures that we do at the garden center too. If just for quick greening, a lot of people are just buying a wreath and dropping it on the top of their urn. Oh, okay. And, and that's the skirt. And that's your skirt. That's okay. your edging. No mm -hmm. thought. And sticking it in there. Yes. And a lot of people are coming in and buying the two to five foot Christmas trees. Yes. Giving it a fresh cut and sticking it in and decorating it as well. And that's what I was thinking about. I couldn't find the two to five. I just found like the, yeah, I couldn't find them. Well, we have more coming in Thursday okay. for you. Okay, excellent. So that's what I was thinking about. Um, and the other thing is that you can also do some smaller ones. Like if you've got leftovers after you do your big front door one, you can do some smaller ones and some other pots 
that maybe you leave in the garage until closer to Christmas and then you can bring them inside. Mm. So they can last for a little while or maybe that's something you put out in the garage every night or, you know what I mean? So you can have these little other little um, arrangements because you, s- you, you have the material. They do offer that nice scent, mm-hmm. that nice Christmas feel, that nice winter feel. And I think if you can tuck them into little places in the house on a shelf, um, you know, that's a nice yeah. way to add more greens into the, you know, they do like need the cold. Um, yep. But if you water them and, and uh, like I said, uh, you know, every few days put them in the garage, uh, you know, that is something that's a nice way to decorate. And we're running out of time. So just before we, we uh, say goodbye yes. for the Six end weeks, of yes. season three. Yes. Or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> season, season three. three. We celebrated our third year. Yes, your that third was a great show. Yes. Last <laughs> week was a great show for anybody who missed it for our third anniversary of the show. We've got lots coming up. What else were you gonna say? D- yeah, and then we'll move to that. <laughs> Just the little bits too, right? You usually yes. have a few different things. Little pieces make great little door swags. You oh. can all bundle them all up with right. a little piece of ribbon, a couple sprigs of berries. Okay. Hang them upside down. Uh, cuts the trunks being upwards and tuck them underneath a little light or underneath a door hang a ho- knocker or something. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, waste not one not. That's right. And I know we talked a bit about foraging in nature, but I did get see one blog post of someone who actually foraged in her own garden and kind of did a window basket um, and she kind of cut the seed pods and different yeah. things from her own garden and made. And so the birds can still eat from the pods, you know, from the basket as opposed to from the plant. So that's another, you know, something to think about i like that it c- very much like that whole grow your own not vegetables but right. now ornamental yeah right and uh like dahlia farms yes kind of thing right there's that hundred mile they're all right there yeah so. yeah for sure for sure so thank you Holy everybody moly. i know there's <laughs> lots we had a lot to talk about um for those who are going to miss us there's still i want to remind everybody that we have turned the radio show into a podcast yes and you can go to iTunes, Google Play, as well as my website at downtoearth.ca. And uh, you can hear um, past episodes, um, past episodes from last. I know we did a show. I think the show I did went on more, if you want more detail on um, the plants, the Christmas plants, making them a uh, gift ideas. Uh, that was, uh, I think, last year, December 1st show. That's a mm-hmm. great show to go back and listen to. So uh, so please try not to miss us. I'm going to be releasing more, coming, going through the back catalog over the next six weeks and releasing more episodes yeah. to turning them from the radio show into the podcast. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and, you know, if you do miss us, you know, you can always visit us on social media. Absolutely. Right? So you're down to the number two, earth.ca. I'm at naturalaffinitydesigns.ca, uh, all of our social media links. And you and I are going to be working quite diligently over the next six weeks. That's right. On creating new episodes and new content and new ideas, uh, lots of exciting stuff. So don't forget to write us, too. Maybe yes. while you're thinking about us, uh, you have a great idea for a show or a topic or someone to interview, right? So don't forget to or don't hesitate to send that in because... You know, we want to learn, just like we say, yes. right there with you. That's right. right. So, Tom, if whatever co- questions your clients yeah, have, Tom. we want to we want to hear about them. What are they saying? And uh, we want to be able to answer them for sure. Well, certainly. Yeah. We so don't know everything. And, and we will <laughs> still be around over the next six weeks. So, if you do have questions 100%. for your plants and gardens and, and things like that, then please feel free to reach out to us. And bye. Goodbye. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yay. Happy New Year's from everyone here at Down the Garden Path. Uh yeah, Gary, thank you for Gary, joining us down Gary. the garden path in this uh, 2017. It's been a great ride, and we're looking forward to 2018. So thank you for joining us here on Reality Radio 101. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101.